the business world needs more creative women. So I'm gonna ask a very eighth grade art teacher question. Who here thinks she or he is creative? Oh, that's pretty good, that's pretty good. So when we're young, we are finger painting, we're making magical things out of popsicle sticks, we sing and we don't care. And as we get older, we decide little by little that being creative is a bit impractical. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I learned to fend off that decision through working at Google, at Uber, and now building Modern Fertility. So first, a little bit of background on me. I am the well-adjusted middle child of three girls. <laughs> and that teaches you a lot about social relationships very, very early. For me, being a girl was always the norm. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> um, and it was also the norm to be a girl who was into stuff. So we were playing sports. We were doing chorus and theater. And it was cool to be smart and to do a lot of things. And my teachers and my parents did a really good job at facilitating an environment in which being a girl who was into stuff, who loved to learn, was cool and was normal. And that translated into a collegiate experience in the liberal arts. So at Amherst, I was able to captain the field hockey team, write for the school newspaper, take all sorts of crazy cool classes, and learn absolutely no real world tangible information. <laughs> I was an English major, and people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to be an English teacher? And I said, you know, no. I want to find a creative application of business. And people would look at me like, what does that mean? And my dad, again, would go, what does that mean? And how much am I paying for this college tuition? <laughs> so when I started looking for what that creative application of business might be, I landed on one field in particular, and that was the advertising world. In advertising, that's where all the creative people were, uh, whether they were selling out to the man or, or, or what have you, all the creative people were in advertising. And I moved into that world, and I was able to succeed there for two reasons. One, I had an amazing mentor, who I'll tell you about in a second. And two, the old school mad men of advertising world were scared shitless of Facebook and the digital age. <laughs> so first, my mentor and first boss ever, Laura, was a badass mother of three who not only did she teach me everything she knew about creative strategy and brand building and product, but she taught me the ins and outs of an organization. She taught me how to advocate for myself at a time when I was just happy to be there and happy to have a job. Um, and she taught me that that wasn't, that wasn't good enough. She also put me in really important rooms really, really early on. And one of those important rooms was the pitch room for Victoria's Secret. We were pitching the Victoria's Secret digital business, and at the time that was the biggest deal ever. And I was working really, really late one night with my executive creative director, and I was briefing him on what he was going to pitch uh, a few days later in this, in this big pitch to the CEO. And he turns to me at one point, and he just goes, Carly, I, I can't do it. I can't say the word panties. <laughs> Carly, will you do it? Will you pitch this pitch for me? I, I just, it's not... I can't do it. So a few days later, there I go, 22 years old, up in front of the CEO of Victoria's Secret, and I pitched the business, which we lost. But that's OK. <laughs> Regardless, there were some senior people who had seen some creative spark in me, something original, and they had given me the opportunity to go, to go and run with it. So there absolutely was room for creative people in business. Not, not too long after, uh, I got a recruiting email from Google. I guess they're good at search or something. Um, and I remember thinking, what do they want me to do, code stuff? You know, like, what do creative people do in tech? I, I had no idea. Um, and it turns out that they needed a creative leader to come in and help demonstrate the value of Google tools and products for small businesses. It was a really cool opportunity. So I moved out to California from Boston. Um, and the only thing I knew about California was that theme song from the OC. You know, California, that, the theme song. Um, didn't know anybody here. Came out and for the next few years worked on a program to help mayors and chambers of commerce help small businesses get online. Uh, and I realized that creativity absolutely had a place in the tech world. 
A few years later, Uber came around the corner. All these bad tech jokes, I know. Um, and <laughs> Uber was looking to experiment with its network. So what else can we do other than rider and driver um, giving rides? So uh, this was a time when every company under the sun was becoming an Uber for XYZ, an Uber for terrariums, an Uber for massages, an Uber for pets. And Uber wanted to see you know, what, are the, what are the businesses that we should get into, what products do people want. So I joined a very small team called the Uber Everything Team. I know, dun, dun, dun. Um, and we were a small group of product managers, ops folks, uh, designers, uh, building new products and experiments really quickly at Uber. One of those experiments was Uber Eats. We built Uber Eats from the ground up in three months, um, and I was able to see how a creative person was essential in creating every part of the app experience, the UI and the product itself, our go-to-market approach, how do we explain to the world why we're delivering food and why that matters. And we launched it in one city, scaled it up to 100 in under a year, and the impact that we saw in people's everyday lives was incredible. There was a grandmother in Taipei delivering with Uber on foot because she liked talking to people and wanted to make some extra money for her grandkids. Uh, and one of, my, one of my favorite stories is one day or one week in LA, we saw a lot of searches for shawarma in one particular neighborhood in LA. There was no shawarma there for us to give people. So we went to a diner owner who was in that area, and we said, hey, have you ever made shawarma? And he said, no, not at all, but I'll try it. He put shawarma on the menu, and he sells out day after day after day. So there are all these really interesting creative, creative problems to solve that tech and creativity can bring together. And creative people absolutely had a role in building products. Now what about building companies? Let's talk about modern fertility, my favorite thing to talk about. So Modern Fertility is a women's health company, and we are focused on making fertility information much more accessible for women earlier on in life. The reality is we are waiting longer to have kids, and that is posing a problem. One in six couples are having trouble conceiving, and education and science just has not caught up to meet the, the modern woman's needs. It just straight up hasn't. So at Modern Fertility, we are trying to close that information gap by taking the same hormone tests that you would get in an infertility clinic, out of the clinic and into women's lives much, much earlier on. And when you track these hormones over time, you can actually get a better sense of your future fertility. You can get a better sense of your menopause onset, success rates in egg freezing and IVF, than just sort of waiting and seeing or going off of age alone. So we see a world where every woman is checking in on her fertility like she gets a pap smear. Um, one of our physician advisors even goes so far as to say, when you get birth control pills, you should also be thinking about planning for pregnancy. Why do we spend our whole lives preventing and then we get to this point where we're ready and we're having trouble? So we just don't think that's good enough. Um, when Afton, my co-founder, who is a brilliant, brilliant genius human, uh, and I started talking about modern fertility, I was one of those women who didn't think she needed to be bothered with fertility information. I'm not ready for kids. I, you know, babies not yet, none of that. And as I started digging into the science, I realized, holy crap, there is so much I don't know. And I realized I could have very easily become one of those statistics had I just said, yeah, no thank you. So this was a massive creative problem. How do we help women earlier on in life understand that this information is really powerful, um, make it digestible in a way that, that isn't scary, and, and start to facilitate this conversation much, much earlier? Um, when Afton and I looked around at other health brands in this space, we saw things that were either really clinical feeling or really babyish or even sort of teeny bopper. Uh, and we didn't see a health brand that was sophisticated, empowered, badass, and was going to give us the information that we needed to map out our, our future. So that's what we went about building. And the ironic part of all of this is everything that we do at Modern Fertility every single day is a massive creative challenge. And I thought my whole life, you either had to be a creative person or you had to be a business person. And that's not the case at all. From fulfillment and logistics of our at-home <laughs> test to talking about how we're going to demonstrate the value of this information to women much earlier in life, it's all a creative challenge. And the best creative challenge has been building our team of amazing, diverse, silly, genius people who are focused on this one problem. So 
to tie this all up in a nice, in a nice little bow, um, the, this middle child of three girls was very fortunate to have teachers, mentors, parents who made me feel like being a woman was not only the norm, but, a, but an advantage. And every time I may have started making the decision that being a creative woman was a little bit impractical, a giant creative problem on a spaceship would come by me, and it was my job to jump on it. Thank you.